Hi, Matt. Well, happy 90th birthday. A little bit of relief, actually. I just wish you were here to be celebrating it. This is your old friend, Vince, Vince Hill. We've known each other for a long time, I know. And uh, it's on days like this. <laughs> She'll forgive the plug, but no. No, you don't forgive the plug, do you? It's marvellous that I remember these things. In fact, I go a long, long way, I think, to ever get a day like this on a summer day like this the sun is shining the glass in my hand and i remember him an old friend an old friend called matt matt monroe who actually had that song um portrait of one of your big hit wasn't it i always felt i should have done it you know not you but there it is I'd go a long way before I would have ever found a song like that again, you know, but you did. I would have gone as far as Russia with love, I expect, to even find one. But wherever you are, man, I hope you're having a wonderful time. You deserve it. And I wish we could be together again. Maybe we will sometime. Cheers and God bless. Hi, I'm Bernie Clifton, and I'm delighted to be part of any form of tribute to Matt Monroe. He was our greatest ever singer of popular ballads. America had Sinatra, and we had Matt Monroe. And aren't we the lucky ones? Now, we're talking 60 years ago. 60 years ago. Um, I was... Um, I was like uh, the most popular man on the planet, it seemed at the time. Women used to faint when they saw me. They still do now, but uh, that's mainly because they're too old to stand up. But I was really a big name, and um, I had done uh, a big co commercial advertising the Daily Sketch, and, and also a play on television where I played a pop star, and the teenagers went crazy. They wanted to know who this actor was, who was a pop star. Jack Good, the uh, Simon Cowell of that era, put me in a show, Oh Boy, Wham, and Boy Meets Girl. So I'm right at the top of my career and starring in all these shows. And I'm starring, uh, I'm on tour, uh, the Granada Circuit, and I'm on tour somewhere up north, could be Bedford, I can't remember. And the show had been going some time, and I arrived uh, at where this, this theatre was, and I saw the second half was closed, being closed by Matt Munro. And I went, my God, Matt Munro? I mean, this is a rock and roll show. Matt had just had the big, the big hit, of course, um, and, and was a big, a big name at that time. Uh, so they, they thought it was a good idea to put him on um, closing the first half. Portrait of My Love was the record, big hit record. And I thought, this is crazy. I mean, it's, this is a rock and roll show. Anyway, Matt turned up and uh, we got on very well, two Cockney boys, you know, and he said he didn't know what, where to stay. So I used to, I was, you used to speak to the stage doorkeeper then, say, where can we stay? He said, you bring up Mrs. Mop or whatever her name was. So he rang her up and had two rooms there. And uh, he went on, he did his act, he was OK, you know, no, nobody complained or anything. But through the day, we became very good mates because we were both Cockney boys and, you know, we really clicked together. So anyway, after the show, I said, you know, let's go out and find a club. I mean, there's no clubs really in places like Bedford. And he said, no, all Matt ever wanted to do all, all his life was have, have a pint of beer, smoke a cigarette and have a curry. That's all he ever wanted, even when he was a big, big, even a bigger star than he was then. Because he played tour with the town, he went on to become uh, Sinatra's best friend, you know, but all he ever wanted was a curry, a fag and a pint of beer. So we go off and we find a place where we have a curry. We get back to the digs about 12 o'clock, which in those days was too late for that type of thing. Uh, the stage doorkeeper forgot to tell me, well, he did tell me, but I forgot to tell Matt that we had to be in by 10.30. It's now quarter past midnight. We can't get in. Oh, so what are we going to do? I said, don't worry, I said, Matt, don't worry. I said, we'll have to keep in my car. And at the time, I had this beautiful uh, Jag, uh, big red Jag, beautiful upholstery really fantastic so i said this is all we can do is sleep in the car so he said okay 
So I said, let's do it properly. Let's get, you know, so of course we had our suitcases. So we, we put our pajamas on and at the time, somebody thought it'd be a good idea if we had um, a, a product called Jess Conrad pajamas. So they met, I'd, I had lots of silk pajamas that the, you know, I was trying out. And I put my silk pajamas on, I looked really the business, silk pajamas and you know, the whole thing. <laughs> Um, I put my seat down and Matt was, uh, Matt was going to lay across the back in the car and he put his pajamas on and they're funny old walls pajamas, you know, ordinary pajamas. <laughs> I mean, I'm all in the silk pajamas, well I'm top of the bill then, you know, so I'm all silk pajamaed up, you know, we're talking, we're laughing, we're having a fag and we're just about to nod off and all of a sudden I get the funny knock on the window and there's a copper. I go, oh, a copper, old bill, you know. And I wind down the window, Matt smoking, smoke come out the window at the copper's face. <coughs> oh, fuck it up. Oh. And he went, uh, God love a duck. It's funny having a cockney accent in Bedford, but he was, you know, he went, God love a duck. He went, Jess Conrad. I was, Jess. He said, God, my wife. She said, Oh, if she knows I met you. I can't hear. And he always like, wanted to tell everybody in, around, but there's nobody around, but, you know. Mid, uh, half past midnight, there's no one around. He looks around as if he can tell something. So he, God, he said, God, I can't believe it. He said, I haven't got an autograph. He said, Can you sign something? So I signed, signed a bit of paper. He said, Who's that in the back? Because <laughs> he looked a bit diabolical by this time. He was half a kip, his pal, it was all a kimbo. I said, That's Matt Munro. He said, That's not fucking Matt Munro, is it? I said, Yes, it's you in it, Matt. And of course, we were having a laugh between us. And he said, yeah, of course. I said, prove your Matt Munro then, sing your hit. So instead of singing in the back of the car, he got out of the car, <laughs> these funny old dodgy pajamas and funny kip, uh, slippers, and he sang Portrait of My Love, you know? And he said, God, we're laughing, and the copper's laughing. He said, so no. Matt got back in the, in the car. He said, follow me. So we follow the old Bill, we follow the policeman, he takes us to a police station. And naturally, I had number one cell, Matt had number two. <laughs> and we go in, and uh, he said, you can stay there the night, boys. And uh, it was pretty good, you know, better than the car. So we're having a kip in the uh, thing, we sleep all night, get up in the morning, we get a full breakfast, full Monty breakfast, eggs, bacon, all the business. Uh, and then we, st we go off in the car and Matt said, Matt said, he said, <laughs> oh, he said, this is fantastic. He said, I must tour with you all the time. He said, I've never had a, a night like it. And it really was a really funny night. And, uh, and then of course, Matt went, went off and uh, his next best friend was Sinatra. But um, I always uh, remember those times with great fondness. Um, I love Matt Munro. He was a, a great guy. He was uh, he was a, a real person. Uh, we had the same sense of humour, and uh, I miss him greatly. He was one of my true friends. God bless you, Matt. <laughs>